Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. To go for Nilungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. Today, I'm going to be reacting to what inspired this young Belgian to convert to convert to Islam. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. My name is Stanley Vega, I'm 23 years old. I come from Aust. I study international and European law. I'm now in my second master. I used to be in Istanbul previous year where I did my first master. At the same time, I'm uh, politically involved. Uh, I try to give the best side uh, of Islam towards the people here in Belgium by showing them that you don't have to fear anything uh, that is religiously involved because especially here in the West we have a lot of problems uh, about this topic and for the rest I'm a normal guy like the most of you are watching up probably so uh, nothing special. How my life was before I came to Islam this is a really interesting question you see because a lot of people they think that my life was like really bad that I was I had a kind of, you know, that I really had a crazy experience, but at, no, really, my life was not that bad. I had uh, a good education. My parents, they came from a good household. I never did something really bad like drugs or uh, even smoking weed, that was too much. My life was just like a normal school day who was raised up in Flanders, not religiously, securely educated. I had football, I had my PlayStation. These were the most important things at the time. Um, no, I really can't say I was really a bad person, but Alhamdulillah, I changed in a different perspective. The religion for me was a foolish thing, because religion, you know, we hear a lot here in the West, especially with the arguments like, because of religion there are wars, um, bad things happen, it's just to keep people stupid. I was believing this too, because you're a product of your environment, you see. If your parents educate you in an Islamic way, probably you will be Muslim. If your parents educate you Jewish, probably you will be Jewish. It was the same with me. My parents, they were, they were atheists, so I used to believe in these secular thoughts. And religion was something stupid for me. I couldn't understand that people believe in religion, but look how the situation changed now. Um, I was raised up in a quite white environment because in my school there were not that much um, Muslim guys or girls, especially not in my year. I graduated with only one guy with Moroccan origin who was more Belgian than I was, I think, because he was drinking all these kind of things. So I didn't know that much about Islam. And um, at the other side, um, I don't know really how I have to explain it, but I, ne I never had something with religion in general because it was far away from what I used to live. I never had something even with the church, for example, even if I was raised up in Belgium from the Catholic background. It was not that I was searching for something, because I was really happy, really. I, even before Islam, I was a happy person. I didn't have a bad youth, I was um, living my life, but just from a different perspective, I was happy. Because I didn't really know, for example, why do we live, what is after that. These kind of questions came later on when I started philosophizing about the sentence, about the why, why do we live, this actual this question. Before I was also happy, but in a different way. The most thoughts that I had were simple thoughts, you know. Black people, when they're 16, 17 years old, PlayStation, football, it's what they do at that time, and that's the most important for them. The first contact with a Muslim or with Islam is a big difference, because the first contact I had with a Muslim guy was not that good, in the sense of he claimed to be Muslim, but Muslim by name, like a lot of people, they didn't, they don't practice that much. So he was Muslim, born in a Muslim family, but if you would ask him, for example, why do you pray, he would not know. The first time when I came in contact with Islam, like it really should have been, was in the mosque itself, and that was a totally different thing. Because, uh, you know, the way how what people say and the way what we actually should do, there is a big difference between it. It's easy to say I'm Muslim, but it's difficult to act upon it. And when I really saw how the Islam was really practiced by the people in the mosque and the especially just the Quran for me this was the most important thing because what you hear and what you read is also something different a lot of people they are um, actually influenced by culture by their education their household but if you read the sources itself the Quran and the Hadith you will be completely amazed this is what happens with me uh, to make a long story short 
um, it's, it's really funny because I never had the intention to convert to Islam or the, just in general towards religion. I didn't need religion because I told you before my conversion I was also happy. But I didn't have this kind of perspective, why do we live, what is after that, these really important questions. The moment I started reading the Qur'an, my whole life changed. Because the Qur'an is like Allah Subhanahu is speaking to you. Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. It are like easy words to say, but they are so hard in your heart. In your heart. I, I remember it broke like a stone. I was even crying that day and, you know, I'm not the type of person that reads a lot of books. Even watching a movie already... Is, you know, I get bored of it. I need to do something. I'm a productive person. But that night, that day, I mean, I was reading from Surah Al-Fatiha till Surah Yunus, chapter 10, just in one day, because I was so interested by it. It's still today. We can read, you know, the Quran. For example, if I read my law book one, two times, I will get bored and I will never touch it again. But the Quran, we read it hundred times and still we want to know more about it. It's really something inspired. My father, you know, I didn't say it to him for one year because I know if I would say it, that he would really act um, disappointed. And you know, one of the things is that we don't want to disappoint our parents. Everything we do, we do of course for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time, we want to make our parents happy. We want to make them proud because they suffered a lot for us. The least that we, that we can do is to make them proud. So I knew my father that he would be really disappointed and I didn't tell it him at all because also at that time ISIS was racing and the media was uh, reporting in a really bad way about the Muslim community. But after one year, I had the courage. My Iman was uh, strong enough to tell it him, and I will never f forget because we went on vacation to France and it was two o'clock in the night, totally silent, you know, quiet. And I said to my dad, I have to tell you something. He said, well, What's wrong? You know, it's, you sound so worried. I said, Yeah. You know, you already found the carpet, and you found the Quran, and I was always saying these are of my friends, you know, I was always finding excuses. And then I told him, actually, like, I'm Muslim. And at that moment, you know, he didn't say anything the first 10 seconds. But then I thought, maybe he didn't hear it, I have to repeat it again, so that I'm Muslim. And then it was like a volcano who burst out. He was shouting, people crying, I never saw my father crying. Which was really strange for me, because in my eyes I didn't do something bad, I was not a criminal, I didn't steal, I didn't murder people, I just said La ilaha illallah, I believe in one God. So I couldn't understand why he was so disappointed and it took a long time that he needed to find the, find the courage again to speak with me, but alhamdulillah, at the end everything went well. My mother, it was completely good with her, you know, she, like a mother, she always, always more soft in her heart. So she said like, okay, you're my son, I, I, I can understand even if I don't believe it, you will always take my son and I will always love you. So that was the easiest part. I have, a, I have a really good relation with my parents now. How difficult it was in the beginning, so easy it is now. SubhanAllah, even if we have a lot of differences, even if there is only one similarity, we try to look to the similarities we have, even if it is only one. For example, halal food is something natural in my house. There is only halal food. Which is really funny because in the beginning my father, he refused to eat halal. He said, I will not change myself towards you. You're the only Muslim here, I will not change myself. Because it's a kind of fear of Western people. They think if you, if, you know, it's by the media, they are a bit brainwashed and they think, okay, Islam, they will conquer us, we will have to follow the Sharia, we will have to follow the rules and they will apply everything. They have, they, they have this natural fear of Islam. So my father, he says, you will not ch I will not change for you. I said, okay, you don't need to, I don't ask you anything. I will even become vegetarian if I have to, it's not a problem. But then my mother, she felt really bad because, you know, a mother, she really loves her children so hard, probably more than herself. So she said, okay, you know, don't say anything to your father, but I will buy halal meat uh, from the butcher where I have to find it. And for two months, my father was eating halal meat, but he just didn't know. <laughs> and then one moment he says like, oh, I love you. I love you so hard. This is the best piece of meat I ever had in my life. And I started laughing too hard because I know it was halal meat. And I said to him, are you sure? He said, yeah, it's, you know, the spices and everything, it's so great. And my mother even started laughing too. And then she said that uh, we have to confess something. It's actually halal meat. And he couldn't go back anymore. So that was the moment everything changed for him. Everything I do in my life is Islamically involved. We live for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't have a lot of time. Our life is short. What we do in life, every second we have to make a profit from it. So even if I'm with my family, simple things, you know. For example, when we are eating, I try to give them a kind of direction to think about life or think about that. But of course, you have to be soft with people. This is something I learned because 
as a converted Muslim, especially in the beginning, your iman is so high, and you want to spread this positivity. You want that every t- everybody becomes Muslim, and everybody wants to has to pray, and everybody has to do Ramadan. But at the end of the day, not everybody's heart is open for these kind of things. We are all different. We all have different uh, characteristics, and one person needs a different treatment than the other one. Uh, it's really important to be soft because I remember in the beginning I was a bit hard with them in the sense of, for example, when my sister would go out, I would give her advice like don't stay too uh, late outside, it's dangerous, I don't want that something happens to you. Really, I said it with a good intention, but for her, she felt a bit like um, too, too much overprotected. So she took distance from me and she said like, okay, because otherwise he will give comments again. And then I realized, okay, you know, I have to be soft with him. Even the Prophet Sallallahu from these 23 years of prophethood, 13 years, he spent it just to tawhid. La ilaha illallah. He didn't say stop drinking, stop smoking. These things came afterwards. So I realized I have to treat them in a different way that they come by themselves to me. That I don't have to go to them. And alhamdulillah, that's how everything changed. Now they ask me even a lot of things about Islam that before they did not even think about. I'm politically, politically involved. I used to work in the European Parliament too. I used to write reports about this kind of things. And it's really, it may, you know, my heart breaks when I see that the Muslim community, especially these days, we have 2 billion Muslims and we cannot even agree about a single topic. Israel is a country, you know, in the Middle East with not even some 10 million inhabitants, for example, but they control all of the Muslim world. They are stronger than us. We cannot do anything. And I think um, we need more uh, brotherhood in Islam because, you know, when, for example, somebody is sick in the Muslim community, we are the first one to, sp- to give him money out of our heart, you know. But at the same time, we also don't want to see that somebody is doing better than us. We want to see our brothers doing good, but not better than us. This is a really bad uh, thing I noticed. But I hope to strive for what, uh, for what you asked. You know? uh, the best advice I can give is just don't be scared. And especially don't let yourself be influenced by people around you. Because if I had to, for example, sometimes, you know, there are brothers and they come to me, they say, I want, to start, I want to start with praying, but I know that my parents, they are not, I mean, they are Muslim by name, but they would not appreciate it. So maybe it's better that when I wait, that I wait with praying when I leave the house. But then I think by myself, if I had to listen to my parents, how they would like me, I would not even become Muslim. Sometimes you have to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked from you. You know, it's not difficult to practice Islam. Praying doesn't cost money. Going to Juma doesn't cost money. Ramadan doesn't cost money. It's for free. Jannah is for free. But Jahannam, like the haram things, you have to buy, you have to spend, it costs a lot. So it's really strange for me when I, when I hear people saying, like, I'm scattered, they will say, or... And at the end, you know, if you do something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will reward you with something much more better. I had this with my friends, for example. I had a lot of friends and I was so scared to lose them. And in the beginning, I thought, okay, you know, I converted to Islam, I don't drink anymore, I don't go to clubs and these kind of things, but maybe I can still be friends with them just by hanging out and uh, going on a cafe, for example, even if I don't drink. But then I realized that even the topics they talk about was not where I was interested in. It's like, I have a friend, he's interested in basketball, I'm in football, and we don't have anything in common. And we cannot find uh, social connections anymore. And then I thought by myself, okay, but if I change myself towards Allah, I will lose a lot of friends. At the same time, Alhamdulillah, now I have brothers who are so good that I even couldn't imagine that they would be so good. No, I don't consider myself as somebody special. Everything I have is because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is in the first place. At the same time, everything I do is also for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I try to follow Islam as much as possible. I'm not perfect, and I think nobody is perfect, but uh, as long as you have the good intention, like Imam Malik rahmullah, he said, every deed will be accorded. I uh, will be judged according to the intention, you're in a good way. And um, just seek knowledge is also something really important. If I look to myself when I converted and now seven years later, I made a lot of mistakes really. Sometimes I think by myself how stupid that was I that I made this mistake two or three years ago. Now I don't even feel the 1% fitna for it. But at that time it was so difficult to leave. The only thing that helped me was was knowledge and good friends. Because you are like your friends are. And this is the most important. I told in the beginning too, you are a product of your environment. You cannot heal in the environment where you became sick. And this is something you really have to realize. Just protect yourself like a shield with good friends, seeking knowledge, and spend your time usefully, because this is also a big problem. I see a lot of guys, for example, I was searching a parking place, and I see a lot of guys hanging around, around the square. Smoking, talking, not even working. 
And then I think by myself, you know, if, if, I would, if I stay in the house for 10 minutes not doing anything, I become crazy. It's like I have a genetics or something. I need to do something. I need to use my time to the fullest. Because if you use your time like really well, you don't have time for haram things and the fitna will become less. This is uh, really important. So use your time well, good friends and uh, seeking knowledge every time, every day, inshallah. Please subscribe to Digital Umar, one of the best Dawah accounts in Belgium in the world. And inshallah, may you all benefit from them like I benefit from their uh, beautiful presence. I really loved this video. I think it's the first time that I'm actually reacting to someone who doesn't have, or oh, I was in a bad place, or oh, I was trying to find the this and that, I was trying to do this, this and that. This was just a person who's already happy. They're happy with their life, they're happy with their family, they're happy with everything around them, they're comfortable, nothing is shaking them, they just didn't believe in God. So from being an atheist, to, to a Muslim which is very very nice I love his story and I love how positively he speaks about things and the way his father reacted I think it's normal most times our parents don't want us to belong to different religions than them hence the bad reaction but with time people ease into what you've chosen for your life another thing he said another important thing he said is to be soft with people that are around in like for example maybe family or friends you have to be soft you don't have to say oh don't do this don't do that show them the goodness of not doing those things and the in turn uh learn from you guys otherwise this video had a lot of message in it it depends on which part you want to pick or learn from and yeah let me know what you guys actually think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it to the friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video mm -hmm.